Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. Now, this is the one minute chart of gold provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. And you can see we got the unemployment numbers. We get the Friday unemployment numbers. And uh, you can see we had a bet here. This little rise breakout. And you can see the same thing in silver. Let's pull it up in silver. So you had this rally based on probably a bet that maybe this time it's going to be bullish of course we know that they always smack it down that's exactly what they did but the the uh, basis for that was this unemployment number that came out here's the mainstream coverage of the story from USA Today October surprise <laughs> that's a kind of interesting title job gains soar to 204,000 and you can see this is the chart of the change in non-farm jobs from the previous month of course we know they revise these all the time right here it says jobs data for the most recent two months are preliminary so they they adjust them all the time but you can see that the trend here seems to be steady this is the number here and we'll read a little bit of this the US economy added a surprising 204,000 jobs in October despite a federal government shutdown that was expected to limit payroll growth the unemployment rate which was expected to be more significantly impacted by the shutdown rose to 7.3 from 7.2 the Labor Department said on Friday a survey by economists action economics had estimated 122,000 jobs were added last month businesses added 212,000 jobs federal state and local governments cut 8,000 etc etc so that's the mainstream job headline that you get now let's jump over to zero hedge and look at the alternative reading of this this is the other numbers that came out along with those surprisingly good numbers whopping 932,000 Americans drop out of the labor force in October participation rate drops to fresh 35 year low so here is the labor force participation rate this is a number that I cite all the time you can see it plunged from 63.2 to 62.8 that's this line right here and you can also see at the this other chart people not in the labor force had a huge spike this red line here and then this spike up so these are two totally opposite views of what's going on now how is it possible that they're adding a record number of jobs but the number of people in the labor force continues to fall so there's an obvious disconnect here between these two numbers what is the explanation well a possible explanation might be that the jobs being added are part-time jobs and perhaps there are people who have two jobs who used to have one job so the number of people who are working continues to fall but the number of jobs that they have continues to rise that's the only possible explanation I can think of for these numbers but clearly the number they want us to believe that uh, this big gain couldn't have been as big as they say or we wouldn't see the number of people working continuing to fall so it's a fake recovery it's always been a fake recovery and it's going to go off the cliff at some point now as I've said before they always use these government announcements of economic reports to smack down the metals it really doesn't matter it, there's no point in thinking through the logic of it why would silver fall you can see from the top here about actually that's gold uh, but silver the drop is from about 21.9 to a low of 21.26 we're talking about a three to three and a half percent change in the price of silver what does that have to do with the jobs report obviously nothing speculation about a potential tapering perhaps but again really 
this is just about manipulation it's an opportunity for the people who are going to manipulate the market and you can see that it's a very US centric market it's an opportunity for them to jump in and smack the price down and that's exactly what they do so the manipulation continues we know that Bart Chilton resigned and that was uh, accompanied by the news that at least the rumor that portions of Dodd-Frank had been excised so that uh, they're not going to go and enforce what they said they were going to enforce and that means that they're not going to stop the outsized players from manipulating the market I think I believe that all along I really have no confidence in their ability to regulate things because there's a lot of laws already on the books that they're not enforcing so what good are new laws going to do if the people who are in charge don't enforce them now let's go over to this big controversy I've covered here on the blog these are both sticky the first one is this article from Jeff Nielsen and uh, he is really lashing out at GATA let's read a little bit of this he says it's with a heavy heart that I write this commentary the corruption of what was formerly an entity of information and truth my own discovery of this dirty little secret came personally for approximately four years GATA the gold antitrust action committee had been publishing my commentaries and with increasing frequency over the past year in particular then abruptly all such publishing instantly and permanently halted the basis for this sudden and total censorship of my commentaries I was told that one of Gata's most significant individual supporters had claimed that there were anti-semitic undertones in one of my more than 1,000 commentaries the one bank there are numerous problems with this false accusation beginning with the fact that none of my commentaries including the one in question ever mentioned the ethnicity of any individuals discussed for the simple reason that this is analysis and only relevant data is included in such analysis what then was the basis for this false accusation I simply used the name of a Jewish family Rothschild in one commentary there was not a single reference to their ethnicity in this entire commentary there was not a single reference to their ethnicity in any of the research materials cited in that commentary it's like being accused of homophobia for simply mentioning the name of a gay individual even though never revealing or alluding to their sexual orientation further proof comes in the fact that it took this mysterious financial supporter of GATA an entire month to come forward with this accusation indeed the accusation came immediately after a massive sustained cyber attack directed against our website had failed to destroy it now I'm going to take Jeff's word on that we have been under I won't say massive sustained cyber attacks but there's no question that we have come under cyber attacks we've had a lot of inexplicable things happening to the silver blog the blogs that I have the Bitcoin channel and silver for the people they're actually both hosted in the same place now they have individual databases that uh, they both have and I've done a lot of work with those it has improved but nevertheless we have had some mysterious DDoS and DOS attacks and I haven't been able to pinpoint them so I definitely believe Jeff when he says that there have been cyber attacks against his site additional proof comes in the fact that all my work now is censored at this now corrupt entity now I think he's a little angry here including any and all commentaries which contain no references of any kind to the original commentary GATA is not censoring anti-semitism GATA is censoring Jeff Nielsen more particularly GATA is censoring the name Rothschild a family so wealthy and powerful that they deem it an unpardonable sin for anyone to even mention their name publicly and he goes on I'm gonna link this so you can read that now what's interesting about this is that Bix Weir immediately came out with a response to this now this is what Bix said just a quick note about an article written by Jeff Nielsen of Bullion Bulls Canada entitled GATA now funded with Rothschild's dirty money in this article Jeff claims that GATA refuses to post his articles because they're in league with the Rothschilds 
Give me a break, Jeff. Of the more absurd things I've read in the gold silver manipulation blogosphere, this tops them all. GATA has no obligation to post anything you write on their website. Just because they stop posting your articles doesn't mean that they have gone to the dark side. All it means is that Chris Powell either doesn't like you or he doesn't think your articles are worth posting to his subscriber base. Half the things I write about Chris half the things I write about Chris won't post because they're too controversial, so get over it. We all make choices on what articles we post or reference on our website. Chris Powell and his gata.org website are no different. Jeff, if you have an axe to grind with Chris for not posting your articles, that's your issue with him. If you're trying to degrade the good name of GATA, you're going to have to deal with me and all of us who have been fighting to end the manipulation of gold and silver for 15 years. Let's get the angry finger pointed in the right direction. So that's Bix Weir. I'm going to link that to... Now, I'm just going to make a couple of comments here. I think a statement that really stands out in what Bix Weir said here is that he said half the things I write about Chris won't post because they're too controversial. Now, if you're familiar with Bix Weir, his theory is this road to Ruta theory about, I'm sure you're familiar with it, that there are good guys and there are bad guys and that the good guys basically have been trying to end this paper Ponzi scheme that is the US dollar and they plan to back it with gold in the future but they're trying to run it out and use it up and collapse the system and then bring in their new system those are supposedly the good guys the bad guys are the guys who are stealing and and keeping this thing running and enriching themselves from the current system now supposedly these Federal Reserve comic books that were released called Road to Ruta give hints at this future plan and uh, Bix also talks about the computer manipulation. I 100% agree with him about the computer manipulation of all markets. But back to this statement, why would half the things that Bix writes about be too controversial for GATA to post? And the question I would ask is why doesn't GATA ever talk about silver? Now you know I've talked about the attack, I won't say attack, but expose done by Chris Duane on Jim Sinclair and researching that and looking into that I would have to definitely say that there are some very suspicious things in Jim Sinclair's past and I find it very strange that he doesn't mention silver or when he does mention silver he tends to give these very strange and cryptic references so what are things that are too controversial for GATA to post? Now GATA is arguing that it is the United States government that is behind the suppression of physical gold and silver prices and the reason that they're doing that is to sustain this paper Ponzi scheme in the currency, the US dollar. So Bix Weir on the other hand is a big silver guy and is it that he's pro-silver? Is that what's too controversial for GATA to post? Or is it his road to Ruta theory? So I know about as much as you do about this. All I can say is that things seem to be breaking down. This is the first time I've seen members of these communities that pretty much agree in principle on most of the arguments begin to fight and bicker with each other. If you've looked at the Charles Savoy articles that I've covered, I think Charles Savoy is probably one of the best deep analysts out there as far as the history of silver and the conspiracy against it that goes back a hundred or hundreds of years. And he mentions the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and all these people all the time. So if that is really indeed the case, that it was merely the mention of the name Rothschild in a Nielsen article, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how this shakes out. If it is indeed the case that that's the reason 
why Jeff is no longer covered by GATA, I would say that I would have to side with Jeff and uh, I would have to begin to doubt the integrity of the people that are running GATA. But again, that's just a guess. I don't know. We're going to wait and see how all of this shakes out. It's very interesting. My gut instinct is that to see the beginning of the community that talks about the manipulation of the precious metals begin infighting and uh, attacking each other, I think this may actually be the beginning of the end of the whole thing. It would be perfectly ironic that the community that has stood together to expose the manipulation would actually begin to break apart right before the manipulation ends. So that's my take on it. Uh, I welcome your comments. I really don't know. I'm just speculating. But you can see from the silver chart, we know from the gold chart, they're up to their same old tricks. They are manipulating the paper price. The numbers that the government is reporting are fake. Uh, the employment numbers are the best they've ever seen and at the same time the worst we've ever seen. So you really can't put any confidence in the numbers that the government's putting out. Uh, they're running this game out, but as I pointed out in my last video, time is running out. There are too many promises and uh, too many people who are dependent upon those promises. And uh, the system itself is getting near collapse. I don't think there's much time left. So, of course, it's time to stack silver and gold and whatever you can, including preps and everything else. And we'll talk to you next time.